as we are about to pause for our national anthem but we're going to have a minute silence first And he was here at the County of Ireland final just a couple of weeks ago. He was buried this week in his native Dungiven. Are on the veil, sung by Neve Higgins from Waddy Graham's. As we pause for our national anthem. That was the voice of Neve Higgins from the Waddy Grahams. And it's the Waddy Grahams in your picture at the moment, the reigning champions. As they put their title, their county title, their Ulster title on the line. And I'm delighted. Joining me for this game will be Orla Mullen. Orla, you're very welcome on board. So it's Kilray against Glen. I'm running through the Glen team. Conlon Bradley in goals. Full back line, Michael Warnock, Ryan Dugan and Conor Carvel. Half back line, Una Mulholland, Kier McFall and Cahill Mulholland. Midfield pairing is Conor Glass and Emmett Bradley. Half forward line, Ethan Doherty, Jack Doherty and Conor Convery. And the full forward line of Mark Dixon, Danny Tallon and Conlon McGuckin. I haven't been told of any changes. So uh, that is the case. 13 of this side lined out in Crow Park in the All-Ireland Final last year. The only changes is Mark Dixon and Kieran McFall in there and the players to lose out is Alex Doherty and Tiernan Flanagan both of which are on the bench. Kilray Owen Rogers in between the posts Rory McCampbell, Charlie Keelt and Tiernan Quigg the full back line Eamon Dara, Oran McLaren and Larry Keelt make up the half back line midfield pairing is James Keelt and Pella McLaughlin half forward line Dahi McLaughlin, Dan Madden and Rory McGuire, full forward line Paddy Quigg PJ McAleese and Kevin Quinn. Your match official, Sean Corran from Fohanville, is your man that will take charge of this one. We know Newbridge are into the semi finals. Who will join them? Will it be Glenn or will it be Kilray? The second of our live quarter finals this evening from Owen Beck as we look out and wait this one to get underway. And Sean Curran does exactly that. Ball broken down and it's James Keelt coming forward for the Kilray men. Massive underdogs coming in against the reigning champions. Keelt is pulled back. That's going to be a free in. And this looks like it's going to be the perfect start for Kilray. And Orla, that's what Kilray will be looking for. They'll be looking to get a good start. They don't want Glenn to get ahead of them and to have to claw their way back into contention. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, I suppose of, of all the games, the senior games this weekend, this is probably most heavily weighted. Um, in terms of a favourites tag, so for Kilray they'll want they, to get a good start and that'll uh, temper the, the expectations a wee bit because if, if Glenn get a good start and get away from them then it could be very hard uh, to pin them back so Kilray will, will not be listening too much of the outside noise and they'll want to they, they put their own wee mark in this game as early as they can. They will indeed and they're off to the first start with a James Keel free and they were happy to let Glenn take the kick out as they retreated, of course Kilray only getting in to the quarterfinals at the last minute. They had to beat Luke to pip Steelstown for that top four spot and they did exactly that. Coming from behind to pip the Luke men for the victory and here comes Eunan Mulhan and lays it off now to Jack Doherty as they try to respond immediately. Jack's allowed, run in, gets the effort away and the sides are level. Good score from Jack on the run and a quick response from Glenn Orla. 
Yeah, exactly. And as much as Kilray want to have a good start, I'm sure Glen want to, to get a good start as well because they're just that um, type of team. They won't be taking anybody for granted and they've so much quality out there that, um, you know, that they're, they're going to be hard stops. So it's, it's not a surprise to see them getting an early score there. I was at the league meeting between the two sides and Paddy, or Danny Talent had an absolute field day that evening. He was on fire. It was a very open encounter. Not expecting Kilray to be as generous this evening. I'm sure they'll try to close up the, the gaps, but they're coming forward here. They like to create the chances, but they're crowded out. They carried that one into the challenge. And Connor Glass in possession at the moment. Sidesteps the challenge there. He's got Kieran McFall with him if he requires him, but Connor's happy to go forward now at the moment as Kilray get the bodies back and Glenn just slow it down and spike in possession now. Michael Warnock and lays it off here to Jack Doherty who got the point for Glenn to level it up at a point apiece which we are at at the moment and he plays it over to Emmett Bradley. Emmett tracked over there by the number 10 for Kilray and that is Dahi McLaughlin. Now it's with Ryan Dugan. Dugie comes forward, lays it off to Connor Carvel. Carvel steps inside the challenge Connor Glass comes to meet him and take possession of the, the O'Neills and Connor going around the long way Kieran McFall comes from the corner forward and Connor Glass was allowed to stroll in there, get the effort away and that's the lead point for Glenn and can really be disappointed with that one or let to let Connor Glass in there unmarked. Yeah we know how good um, Connor is in defence obviously but he's got great movement and attack as well and um, just then we twists and turns and he always finds that wee bit of space and, and he got it there and it's an easy enough finish by his standards. So Kilray take the short kick out this time and Owen Rogers in possession at the moment and just slips through the hands and it gives the opportunity there for Conor Convery to come in as Emmett Bradley puts in the challenge and they've turned it over here and this could be danger here. It's three against one and they're bearing in on goal. A chance for Mark Dixon. The goal was on and he's ended up putting it wide of the target and only Mark Dixon can explain that one. I Orla. don't think he'll be going on YouTube to watch the replay of that after this game anyway. Um, hopefully that doesn't come back to bite him but great relentless play from, from Glenn just attacking, uh, pressing from the front and to get that opportunity I think even if he had got a point he would have been disappointed with that so uh, not the outcome he would have wanted Yeah there was a glorious goal chance on there it was three against the keeper but Mark Dixon blazed it wide of the target it didn't even look like he was going for a goal because it was high and wide but here comes PJ McAleese and lays it off now and Kilray trying to take advantage of that missed opportunity at the other end for Glenn but Glenn putting Kilray under pressure but they've held on to possession here and coming forward is Rory McCampbell McCampbell though almost ran into traffic but they hold on to possession gives it back out now to Charlie Keelt Charlie coming forward he's got James beside him but he doesn't use James on this occasion he uses Rory Maguire Rory Maguire trying to take on Conniff McGuckin and he gets the hand in again was it touched on the ground no it wasn't they've turned it over and Glenn are so good at that getting the hand in turning possession over and now the build from the back with Kieran McFall and if you carry the ball you're more than likely nine times out of ten Glenn are going to turn you over Orla that's it the, the work rate just from back to front is, is unbelievable and as I say they'll not be taking anybody for granted so um, they're as, as hungry as they were last year and the year before by the looks of it and um, that's a dangerous thing if you're a Kuroi player so Connor Convery plenty of height in it but hasn't got the direction that will go down as a second wide for Glenn it remains two points to one, five or three points to two points to one. Five minutes on the clock. We we'll just get the scoreboard corrected. Glenn two points, Kilray a point. As the kick out comes from Rogers, and it's a good one over here, and collected by Charlie Keelt. Makes the mark, gives it into James. James sidesteps Emmett Bradley there, comes forward, lays it off now. A chance here for Maguire on the 45 meter line. Just give it behind the man. He had a side just retreat his run was Dan Madden. But he's still coming forward here as Madden and he breaks his way through, gets the effort away, but in the end, it's a disappointing one. Looked to have all the hard work done, but couldn't get the finish. And can Ray get a wide? And Conlon kicks it out here now to Connor Carvel. Connor coming driving forward here from on the stand side here of Owen Beg. The pitch looking immaculate despite all the rain over the last, you could say months, but definitely over the last week that we've had, but it's still looking immaculate. Here's Ethan Doherty dashing through. Ethan lays it back out here to Convery who had a wide, but he's got a point on this occasion. But it's that bust of speed 
from Glenn to create the opportunities. That's it, just a wee shimmy and then turns afterburners on and um, sets up the opportunity uh, for Convery, which was an easy enough finish for him. So um, we know Ethan from Glenn and Derry jerseys is well capable of that wee burst of pace that can just put the defenders in their back heel and create a lot of opportunities then for Glenn. Well, three points to one to the reigning champions looking to book their place in the semi-final in the semi-final draw which will take place tomorrow after the other two quarter-finals we already know Newbridge are there after their hard-fought victory against Lavi where they came from they were five points down at one stage in the first half they were four down at half time but they came out and turned in a very strong second half performance Sean Young very much to the fore for the Newbridge men the ball in here now to Kieran McFall back of course in the Glen Colours and Derry this year and now Michael Warnock Spike gives it to Conliffe McCookie Conliffe long fist in again Ethan Darty with the one hand this is quick this is a chance here for Mulholland into Connor Glass and he finds the far corner as cool as you like from Connor Glass quick hands from Glen. yeah really good team move and uh, they all just seem to know where the, the next man's going to be and um, unselfish play as well from Cahill they, they pass it across for, for Connor just to tap it under the net and um, as we were saying about Kilray would want a good start and uh, it's not ideal for them because they're already looking at um, a wee bit of a mountain to climb so um, it's uh, great, great for Glenn to get the goal early but uh, not ideal for Kilray No, nope, the task has just got harder for the Kilray men, came here as I said huge underdogs against the reigning champions, looking for three in a row this year and looking very accomplished already despite just eight minutes on the clock the Wattie Grahams came through the group stages with six wins from six the only team to have the 100% record throughout the group stages Mahara felt the other team going unbeaten but they finished their last game with a draw against Newbridge so they had five wins and one draw and Glenn with the six wins in their group topping Group A and playing as I mentioned Kilray who finished fourth pipping Steelstown with a victory in their last game and here comes Convery Connor Convery to Mark Dixon to Emmett Bradley and back out here now to McFall he's got Spike he'll fancy maybe having a go from there not on this occasion instead he pins a ball over to the far side but a good strong hand in there from the Kilray man wins it back and the loose ball is picked up there by Eamon Dara now to Charlie Keelt out to Paddy Quigg as Kilray Bill from the back McAleese quick hands McAleese finds Rory Maguire under pressure from Connor Glass who has got a goal and a point to his name already now with McAleese again McAleese just looks around to see what's available nothing at the moment so he has to go himself he's found a little bit of space he may have took a few too many steps but he's got away with it but again Glenn closed off his avenue and they have to rebuild McAleese spreads it over now to Charlie Keelt or not Charlie Keelt apologies it's e Eamon Dara and now it's back again and a chance here for Dahi McLaughlin but Glenn turn it over yet again and now there's danger for Kilray as a try to get bodies back but it's Ethan Doherty driving forward here he's got Cahill Mulholland he uses Mulholland and Mulholland gives it back to Ethan Doherty, Doherty from the 21 on the run and just gone to the wrong side and wide again but how quick they can turn defence into attack. That's it, they, they got away with it there Kilray but I think um, even the transition from the grip stage is now to the knockout when you're making we simple mistakes like that against a team like Glenn and getting turned over that easily you could be seriously punished they, they weren't there but you have to think that that's not going to happen too many times in this game. Yep we've hit the serious stuff now it's the knockout stages and you could just see the intensity building in the previous game Newbridge and Lavi compared to the group stages and now Glenn will be up in the tempo even more despite coming through the group stages as I said unbeaten the effort coming in that's a good effort has it gone over the bar yes it has good score from Kevin Quinn and a fine score from the Kilray man yeah it was really good um uh, with it, the, the distance that he was out and the fact that he didn't really have a lot of options inside that, that he could go for so um, obviously Corey are not going to be committing maybe as many men to attack as, as what Glenn might do so he really had only had the choice to, to try and take it on and uh, far from an easy shot so a uh, uh, very nice finish 
as Michael Warnock is pulled down on the 21 and this will be an opportunity Emmett Bradley you will feel with the left foot will be the man that will be going over to take responsibility for this free decent crowd here for this double header stand almost full you would feel and quite a nice little gathering of people over on the far side beautiful evening it must be said here in Ombeg compared to some of the, the evenings we have had so it's nice that when it comes to championship football that we have the weather to go with it as Emmett steadies himself with the left foot and comes forward and swings this one happily for him between the posts to get him off the mark and it's probably when you look back on the championship look back on the league Emmett Bradley has been absolutely fantastic for Glenn this year yeah it's it's brilliant um, for them they, they have a player like Emmett there is just you always know what you're going to get he's so consistent and with the freeze and just his general play and he's a real uh, leader on there as well you can see him constantly talking and um, telling them when they need to settle down and giving them the, that instruction that's really important on the pitch and uh, good for him to get that, that free as well that uh, I think when you're a free ticker you always want to kind of get those early ones over yeah a nice uh, handy one for him to start off with here's Owen Rogers, Kinray goalkeeper coming out which we see a lot of with goalkeepers nowadays coming driving out here and driving through the middle here for the Glen or the Kilray men. He's still going, lays it off now to the point scorer the last time, which was Kevin Quinn. But he's been pushed away out there by Connor Glass into the corner, but stealing in here and an opportunity maybe for Kilray. But you can see the Glen bodies putting them under pressure. But it's got it back out here to McAleese. McAleese, though, two, three Glen players around him, and he, they've turned him over again. Ryan Dugan's the man that comes out with possession. And Kilray, they had the opportunity there, Dahi McLaughlin was the first one along the end line, but once you run into trouble as we mentioned before Glenn are usually the men that come out with possession, Orla, and again that's the case Yeah, that's it, I mean the Kilray players are getting a, a split second on the ball, they, they think about what they're going to do next and the next thing they've got the three or four Glenn men on top of them, so um, you know, Glenn not going to be taking their, their opponents lightly and uh, they're being relentless here from the first whistle, which doesn't really bode well for Colray. So Conlon Bradley plays it across to his brother Emmett, who got married earlier in the year, did Emmett. So Emmett in possession between the 65 and the 45 as we look out here from the stand side of Owen Beg over to Ryan Dugan. And Dugan lays it off to Jack Doherty. Saves his way through. Back to Ryan Dugan. And Jack Doherty goes for the return. Jack using his pace to go in there. Lays it off out here to Danny Tallon. First time we've mentioned Danny. As he said, he was outstanding in the league fixture between the two sides. But can Ray maybe have the homework done on him tonight? A dangerous ball across there, but it was well read by Emmett Bradley. who spreads it away over now to Eunan Mulholland. He's going to be tracked over there by Dahi McLaughlin of Kilray, but Unit gives it away back to Conlon. The Glen goalkeeper who finds his team captain, Connor Carvel. Conlon goes for the return. Conlon has a chance here. He might get on the score sheet as Conlon steadies himself, but it's gone to the wrong side and wide. So fourth wide for Glen and Conlon. He found the space, Orla. Uh, he's not doing the keepers any favours yeah. there with these new attacking keepers, um, but no, he, he found the space well and. Um, to be fair, he was kind of swinging around on it. He maybe didn't get a good luck at the post. It uh, wasn't too far away, but um, we'll see if it deters him from trying it again. He's out of position here. and he's, I thought Spike was going to go for that one, but he left it. And a chance here for Paddy Quigg. Quigg lays it back to McAleese. The goalkeeper, Colin Bradley, still off his line. Back out to Quigg again. Quigg from an acute angle, but it's across the front <laughs> of the post. And out and wide. and Missed opportunities, and we've mentioned it before, you can't afford to be missing opportunities like that when you are coming into a game as huge underdogs. Oh totally, that was a big opportunity for them there because as we say, Conlon was up the pitch and I think when he came back down then he, he didn't know whether to go into the goal or come to meet him and did not get any sort of a score out of something like that um, you know, you're that's not going to happen too often in this game so you really need to be capitalising on what is often very rare uh, Glenn mistakes So Spike, Michael Warnock got married this year as well in possession and his new wife of course Leanne is into a county final already with the Wattie Grahams where they will take on Steelstown in the senior championship final in two weeks time so already one 
member of the household into the county final, while Michael will be hoping to follow suit with the main side of the Wattie Grahams. But he's just worried now about getting to a semi-final at this stage. Connor Glass seems to be operating now at full forward. Takes the ball there. He's been pushed out, but coming in from the angle is Ethan Doherty. Was he pulled back? No. The ball just spun away from him. And possibly a little bit of dew probably coming down now this time of the evening. He just skidded off the surface, but here's Kilray coming forward. 1-4 to two points in favour of Glenn. Almost 17 minutes gone in the opening half of this O'Neill Senior Football Championship. Quarter final, good ball across to Keith but he was tracked back there by Emmett Bradley, who tracked him all the way, Orla. Yeah, it was a really, really good move from Kilray. They're actually, they're very organised in defence. It's just Glenn are a bit too quick at times, and they managed to, to get the, the ball back that time and broke really quickly, and it was a, a nice pass across, just maybe a wee bit too far, and, and Emmett, as you say, doing a crucial role just to, to put him off and off. Jack Doherty's effort, half blocked down, is picked up there by Owen Rogers, and Kilray working the way out of defence we'd be disappointed with the goal they conceded but it was quick hands from Glenn that created the opportunity for Conor Glass to palm the ball into the corner of the net McKinray have had their moments as well but just haven't been as clinical as Glenn have had when they have had their opportunities and they're coming forward here now with Rory Maguire but it's slow from Kilray. And they just need somebody with an injection of pace. I suppose that's the big difference between the two sides. Glenn have got that injection of pace of players coming in from the wing. Kilray just a little bit more slower in their build-up. Charlie Keelt in possession. And the man pulls Conor Glass away from the position. That man was Pather McLaughlin, so it left a little bit of space there for Charlie Keelt. But they've been pushed back out again. Eamon Dara in possession Kilray way back to 2012 I think was the last time they reached a county senior championship semi-final so it's been a long time their last quarter final was back in 2017 when they lost to the same opposition then defeating them that day and carried it into traffic and he's over carried so it's going to be a free out to Glen. Glen, when they see that opportunity they're just in like a shot. Yeah, that's it. You only have to show a, a wee bit of vulnerability and they're pouncing on it uh, and getting themselves straight up the pitch. They're not even giving you a moment to breathe. Once you once they force the turnover, they're, they're ready to go again. So um, the fitness levels will, will need to be good on both sides. They will. And Jack Doherty, little dinky pass in there in front of Danny Talent. Emmett Bradley went on for it. Emmett has it now. Emmett onto the left foot. That's a beautiful score from Emmett Bradley. And that's the difference, or uh, the speed that Glenn moved the ball. Exactly, he's just taking the pass, one step, and hitting for the post. Um, he's got a man there that's that's trying to put him off. He's doing the best that he can, but it's just moving so fast and so accurate that uh, I, I don't really, if you're a career, I don't know how you can stop that. There's a little bit of space here for Kilray. Ball in round the back. And there's a bit of soccer style. Was he tripped? The referee says no, he wasn't. Can Ray support feel that he was? But Sean Corn says no. I think it depends what jersey you're in there, but I, I would say it's, it's a wee bit of a good sign for Correa that they're, they are getting that space in behind, so if they can get those balls right, there seems to be the space there for them to attack, um, and, and you know you only need one or two of those opportunities, hopefully they try and hit the net, but um, that's something that they could maybe look at, trying to, to get a wee bit more advantage out of. The one thing about Kilray, they are a side that can, can hit goals, so if the opportunities you would feel, they will take some of them. But they need to be taking them all when the opportunities come. A good challenge coming in there to knock the ball away from Danny Tallon. But he has time to, to pick it up again. Danny very close to the, the sideline. But he plays it right back here to Conor Convery just outside the 45 metre lines. They see that he steps inside it. And coming round the back is Kieran McFall. Turns away from the challenge. Lays it off to Ian Mulholland. Back now to Spike. Michael Warnock. Did. Poor ball from Michael Lowe. Has given away and has gathered up there by... Dan Madden, Dan Madden away over on the far side, two Glen players around him, three now, but he managed to get the ball back here to make it to the corner of forward, Paddy Quick, Quick in now to McAleese, McAleese has got a little bit of space coming across to try and cut it off, it's Kieran McFall, but McAleese gets the effort away, but that's a poor, poor effort from PJ McAleese, and it's out and wide, and we talked about this before, Orla. They can't afford to be missing chances. Yeah, that's it. Just as we were saying earlier, you know, he's got no options in front of him, so he's thinking, I need to take the shot on. But 
seems to be just a wee bit too far out and doesn't have the accuracy and, and you know the Glenn are collecting a kick out and they're going again. One five to two points in favour of the reigning champions. Connor Carver in to Convery. Just back here to Euron Mulholland who fists it forward to Ethan Doherty. Euron goes for the return. And Ethan sprinting up alongside him, takes the ball from him. But Ethan has run into traffic there. Mark Dixon's there to help him out though. Back now to Kieran McFall. Little dinky pass from McFall in because Euron Mulholland was still continuing his run on in. Oh, good hand in there from PJ McAleese to turn it over. And now picked up there by Dahi McLaughlin. Inside to Quinn. Quinn lays it off to Larry Kilt. Larry Kilt has got options, but again is slowed down from Kilray and they're being pushed back. And now it's back with Charlie Kilt. Charlie fists it into the centre. And Kilray just need to win the break up and turn the ball over. They need to move quicker, but unfortunately for them, they don't have the bodies up to move it quicker. But a chance here now maybe for Larry Kilt who runs into traffic, pulled to the ground, and it's a free in. It's a difficult one when you get bodies back, Orla, to turn, when you do turn the ball over, to get the bodies up there to help you out again. Yeah, that's it, because it was a brilliant turnover there by PJ, but when you're looking forward and thinking, where do you go from here, then there's no real option but to turn back, and then then get all their men back, and, and you can't really get that injection of pace on it. So um, I do think that was a free there. I think maybe he was about to lose possession of the ball anyway, but... Um, hopefully now uh, Keith can put this over and uh, it'll add another wee score onto the board for Kilray. I mean they're not a million miles behind defensively, they're actually doing pretty well, it's just that when they get up the pitch it's, it's hard to get all them supporting players up there when they're doing such hard work at the back. And the effort from James Keith goes between the posts for his second point of the day and it reduces the deficit to a five point game. See Maliki Rourke writing a few notes down there when James Keith was taking that. I'm sure Maliki did not be overly happy with how Glenn are playing because they give the ball away a few times where they could have been caught on the break but here is Kieran McFall now in possession for the Watties as he comes forward it's the whole possession on the far side Eunan Mulholland in now to Michael Warnock just slows it down a little bit does Mike Michael back now to Doogie Ryan Dugan and going up at pace was Emmett Bradley, but it was only a decoy run. Danny Tallon has come deep, maybe to get more on the ball. Ethan Doherty now in possession. Ethan into Connor Convery. Connor gets a little nudge in the back, but the referee says that's fair enough. Back now to Spike, who's just in that holding role as the rest of the bodies come forward. Danny Tallon takes it off him. And Danny now finds Jack Doherty in a little bit of space on the stand side here of Owen Big. As he looks to offload it to Ethan Doherty. And this is in now to Danny Talent. Back out to Connor Glass. A goal and a point to his name already. That's not going to have the legs. But in there is Doogie. And the chance. The full back was in there. But Doogie didn't get the right connection. It was half blocked down. Not sure if Connor spotted Doogie in there. Because he didn't really put much of an effort to put it over the bar. So maybe he spotted Doogie's run coming in. And he was just lobbing it in there, Orla. And it looked like a wee bit more of a dink really. Than in putting him full force behind it. So um, I'd say I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And say that he meant it. But uh, unfortunately... Ryan couldn't finish it off from. Good play from Kilray. They've turned it over again. And the man coming out there was Pella McLaughlin. He wins himself for free. Over now to, to, G or to Charlie Keel. Charlie Keel sidesteps the challenge. Coming on to this one now is Tiernan Quigg. Tiernan Quigg has got space in front of him. And Kilray come forward here. But there's few options for him. But one on there on the outside is the corner forward. Paddy Quigg. Paddy lays it off. And a chance. The effort coming in. And that's gone over the bar. It's a point for Dahi McLaughlin. It's two in a row for Kilray. As you said they're good in defence and now they turned it into a score at the other side when they turned it over yeah that's exactly what they want there it was just a quick move and um, you know they're picking their passes out and they take the shot when it's on and it goes over the bar and uh, when you look at the scoreboard I mean they're they're well in the game and uh, that's no surprise because they're doing well defensively and now they're starting to find a wee bit more rhythm and attack and they have players up there that, that know where the posts are and can find them so um, uh, they'll be hoping that they can you know keep that t scoreboard ticking over yeah we're inside the final four minutes of this opening half, so they'll be looking to keep it tight up until half time. The four points adrift at the moment. They'll not want Glenn to pull clear before the break. And 
They try and invite Kilray to come out of defence, but at the moment they're happy enough for Glenn just to hold possession, and Emmett Bradley is doing exactly that. He's trying for Kilray to come out, but at the moment, Orla, Kilray is having none of that. Uh, we might be getting a wee viral clip out of this if it goes on, but um, yeah, they're just trying. Kilray, as you know, as I say, they're they're obviously very organised and they know what all their jobs are, so they, they don't want to be pushing out too high to be leaving that space then for Emmett to just kick a ball in and, and create a score out of. They're not going to fall into the trap that Emmett was trying to play for them there. But now it's with Conniff McGuckin. Has he got the legs to it? No, it's dropping short. Keeper comes out again. Ryan Dugan is in there, causing trouble. But Kilray win that loose ball and a chance to break again with Larry Keel. Back to James, right back in the corner. Making himself available there is Eamon Dara. Eamon Dara coming out for Kilray. James Keat takes the ball off him. James, two points to his name, both from freeze. He's going to spread it away over to this side here. Lucky he got the legs on it because Connor Glass was in there. Owen Rogers about to be put under pressure by Connor Glass. But Kilray playing a dangerous game in there because. But they've worked their way out here. But the tackle will come in. And if Glenn turned this over, Kilray would be in trouble. But they've managed to work their way out. And now they might find a little bit of space coming forward. Sometimes you have to play that dangerous game to try and create a little bit of space. And the ball over to the far side. Picked up by Larry Keelt into the corner. And there's a good ball in here. And an opportunity maybe for Kilray to hit a third point in a row. As the ball comes back out, was that a nudge in the back? Referee says, yes it was. And suddenly Kilray could hit a third in a row. They play a dangerous game sometimes, Orla. But as I mentioned, sometimes you have to do that to create the space to break exactly that's it was hurt mouth moments for some of the Kilray supporters there at the start of that move but when you're bringing it from Owen Rogers right at one end of the pitch up the, to the far end and getting what looks like a very scorable free out of it um, you know it shows that they, they've got a wee bit more composure they've got a wee bit more confidence now as, as the game has gone on as they should and uh, if they put this over now you know heading towards the break they're, they're in a good position they are Dan Madden is the player that was fouled and just receiving treatment there Karen Keelt the physio with Kilray, making sure he's okay. And PJ McAleese will be the man. Ryan Dugan, twice he's got a fist to it in the full forward position. But without reward, as PJ McAleese pops over. Oh, he's put it wide. I was going to say popped it over, but that's no excuses for that, Orla. Yeah, not to sound like a broken record, but you know, when you're getting them opportunities against this Glen team, um, you really need to be putting that over the bar because. Um, the, you know the points they all add up and to be back with on a goal of them as we head towards half time would have been um, you know brilliant back with them on score but unfortunately he just missed the target with that one here's Michael Warnock coming forward after collecting the ball from Condon Bradley lays it out to Mark Dixon with a glorious goal chance that he plays wide high and wide there's three against one the ball comes forward here with Kieran McFall we're going to have one additional minute as Kieran's effort comes in but it drifts out to the, the long side at least one and wide of the target not the same spectacle as we had in the first game Orla definitely not the same excitement although the scoreboard is quite close there just doesn't seem to be that kind of bite that you would expect from a, a knockout game maybe there's a wee bit of tension and a wee bit of nerves and obviously Correa are a bit tentative about wanting to go all out attack and um, Cor or Glenn are making a, a few uncharacteristic mistakes as well even Kieran McFall there putting that wide and we haven't mentioned his name too much throughout the half he, he hasn't ha had as big an influence probably as he, as he would have liked so there isn't quite that same bite that you would normally see from a, from a knockout championship game right, can, can Ray get a score before half time to reduce it even further yeah. we're inside that one additional minute at the moment James Keat in possession in no rush to come forward here at the moment though is James a superb stalwart for Kilray and Derry through the years has been James Keelt and still keeps coming back year in year out pulling on the Kilray jersey and he spreads it over to Charlie again and similar keeps coming back stronger and stronger each year and that's a dangerous ball over the top there might be an opportunity if he had taken it but he just couldn't take it and the ball broke through to Conlon Bradley and there goes the half time whistle Glenn lead 1-5 to 4 points but I'm sure Malachy Rourke and the management team they'll not be overly happy with how it has went Kilray 
probably feel they could be a lot closer. That's it. I mean, even just from that last chance there, there's been maybe two or three of those moments where Kilray could have got him behind and, and got a goal, which would make a massive difference. So I think if you're Glenn, you're, you're definitely not comfortable at this point. You just get that feeling among the crowd that they're, they're just they're waiting on Glenn to up the tempo and pull it clear. And I think that's why the atmosphere is probably a little bit dead on it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, there hasn't been any real moments of magic as such. Um, they've had a lot of possession, but I think they're they're just waiting for that moment for them to click on the gear because we know what the levels that they're capable of and they don't seem to be hitting it quite there the night. So I think the, the crowd know that there's more there, but, you know, they, they really need to bring it when you're in a knockout game. If, if you're not bringing it, then it could come back to bite you. Well, more from Orla in the second half, but we leave it here at half time. It's Glenn, the reigning champions that lead. Glenn, 1 5, Kilray, 4 points.
You're welcome back. We await both teams to re-emerge from the dressing room down underneath us. But we did see Peter or Stevie O'Hara, apologies, was called in quickly into the, the changing rooms there. So Orla, we're expecting maybe that Stevie will be coming on. Yeah, it looks that way. And uh, Malky obviously isn't overly impressed with what he's seeing. He wants to switch things up. And I could say Stevie's going to add that, that wee bit of injection maybe that they, they seem to be lacking and uh, get them pushed on to that next gear. And can re re-emerge down below us. From the dressing room, as they come out. We wait then to re-emerge. No changes on the Kinray side from what I saw from them running out down below us. So we wait the Wadi Grahams to come out. John Corn, the match official, has the ball in hand in the centre of the field. As we wait, Maliki Rock's men to come back out. Lavi in the first game kept Newbridge waiting, didn't do them any good. Definitely didn't. Um, hopefully, we've a wee bit more of a second half contest than what we had in the last game. And Lavi kind of done all their football in the first half, unfortunately for them. And uh, obviously give credit as well to Newbridge they, they really turned it on in the second half and I think they did, deserved the one on the end up so just looking around maybe where can Ray are going we expect probably in the second and if can Ray they're pretty strong they're going to forward to get back so the, the biggest problem is that they're six and you don't really want the team lying in the opposition to I can't imagine they're going to first half and you have to first thing send it so see you know where they get the scores from they then have to get there Is in. So Stevie O'Hara is in. And after that first half chance, keeper Mark went to work the goal. So the second half get underway here. Management. Board. Nine. For. On. The Glen. Is underway. And the ball is broken down by Connor Glass, but it's picked up there by the corner forward, Kevin Quinn, operating around the centre of the field, but the referee had spotted a free. It's going to be taken by James Keel. James plays it back there to Charlie, who spreads it over to the far side. Kinray will be looking for a good start to this second half. They'll try to come forward here now with Oren McLaren. Now PJ McAleese comes deep to gather possession. Back to Charlie again. Plays it into the centre. Coming forward now is Eamon Dara, but it's slow. Now Charlie Keane in possession again for Kilray. The score 1 5 to Glen, 4 points to Kilray. PJ McAleese. He's seen a green and white, green and gold wall of Glen, and he turned and came back. And Glen, or Kilray, have to try and build again, but Glen of that row of jerseys between the 65 and the 45 that they have to try and get through before they hit the next block wall but they have got through one of them but they've been pushed back out again and they've been gobbled up here and been turned over are they? No, they've held on to possession the corner forward has picked up the loose ball Paddy Quick but they have to give it back out to Charlie again you break one wall of Glen players but then you hit another block wall and they hold possession with Dara Eamon Dara in possession here but it's slow and patient from Kilray they've managed to hold possession since winning the free 
almost lost it at one stage but they're not making much headway here Orla no not really I mean when you're right in the middle of the park that's probably Glen are happy enough for, for you to be there and there's not too many incisive runs being made to, to give the man on the ball an option so you can kind of pass it around as much as you want around that middle third but if you're not kind of making runs on the and this attacking third, then uh, it's not going to give you much good. No, they're not making any headway at all. And they're being pushed back, and as Orla said, Glenn will be happy enough. They have the four-point advantage. They don't have to force the game. It's up to Kinray to force it and get their way back into it. McAleese almost gobbled up there by Ethan Doherty, but he managed to hold possession. Sidesteps the challenge there of, of Jack Doherty and finds a little bit of space and gives a good ball inside and is well taken in there and an opportunity, but the bodies get around. The referee looks at it, but he's happy enough with it and the ball comes back out, an opportunity. But in the end, Kilray, after all their possession, they've nothing to show for it and the half an opportunity for Dahi McLaughlin, but he was quickly closed down and after all that, Orla, nothing to show for it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, on the, on the bright side, you could say it was a really good ball on there by PJ McAleese. And uh, uh, Dahi was just crowded out. But again, not putting that over the bar then. I'm not saying it was an easy chance. But at the same time, any kind of half chances that you're getting, you're really looking to get the score out of them so that you can close this gap down a wee bit. So Glenn, enjoy their first possession of the second half. And Kieran McFall has the ball in hand. Lays it back out to Michael Warnock. Spreads it in to Doogie. Ryan Dugan on the 65 metre line. Cahill Mulholland will be available to take possession of him, which he does so. Cahill going across the field. Coming to meet him there was Kieran McFall, but Cahill held on to it. Gives it now to Ethan Doherty. Back to Cahill again. Cahill back to Ethan Doherty going through the centre. Ethan going at pace with a good strong hand in there. Good challenge coming in from Larry Keelt. But Glenn win the loose ball. But have they given it away? No, they haven't. They've held on to possession. And right way over in the far corner. And Ethan Doherty now has given it away. Picked up there by Rory McCampbell. And now Kinray try to move the ball out of defence. But they need to move it a little bit quicker. But they can't do it like that. Give it straight to Danny Tallon. Danny might have goal on his mind here. It'll be a gift if he does. Danny goes in. Wonderful save from Rogers. Back out again. And it's put over the bar by Ethan Doherty. But a goal chance. Gifted by Kinray. But Ethan Doherty with the point. That's it, I think Patter McGoggin's getting a wee bit of stuck there from some of his teammates because um, like initially Larry Keat made a brilliant tackle and then Glenn get the ball back and Clare get the ball back and making a really simple mistake like that that was super saved from Owen Rogers. He got down really, really well to save it. Um, I don't think Danny could be you know, too disappointed with the shot that he took. It was a good shot, looked like it was going into the corner, but Rogers got down really well and then getting the ball over the bar then and the follow-up, I suppose it could have been worse, could have been on the net, but that was... A score that came out of Kilray's own making, really. Yep, an absolute gift from Kilray. And you would expect Danny Tallon to find the net from there, but Owen Rogers credit the goalkeeper. He's feeling the effects of it at the moment. Receiving treatment there from Karen Keelt. Down at the scoreboard end here of Ombeg as the light fades around Dungiven. The floodlight shining down here on Glen and Kilray. The prize for the winner, a place in next weekend's O'Neill's Senior Football Championship semi-finals. Already there is Newbridge. And the other two quarter-finals taking place tomorrow back here in Ombeg. Slothneil taking on Balahi. And Maharafelt taking on Ballin the Screen. So plenty of action tomorrow as well. It was a busy day today as well. Intermediate double header in Glen wins for Banagher and Drumsorn down there. They've booked their place in the intermediate semi-finals. Money more overcoming McGilligan in a tight affair in Celtic Park earlier this afternoon as well by a single point to book their place in the junior semi-finals as Rogers has recovered from that save. Plays the ball over to the far side, slips through the hands of Cahill Mulholland, picked up by Kilray way over in the far wing. But you can see the bodies of Glenn getting around the Kilray man, but Rory Maguire wins himself a free, which will be taken by Charlie Keelt. Plays it into the centre here. And an opportunity for Kevin Quinn, who had a fine point in the first half, to come forward. And the corner back coming here, which is Tiernan Quick. Tiernan Quick, though, is going to get the effort away. It'll be a fine score from Quick. It is. Good score from the corner back. Yeah, it was a brilliant score there. And he got himself into a really good position. And, and he was coming under a wee bit of pressure. He was nearly a wee bit off balance, but managed to get the boot under it and, and get it over. And as we say, those are the type of chances that they want to see going over the bar. They, they kind of keep themselves in touch. and. Um, it was a really good finish for a defender. 
Danny McDermott warming up for Glenn. Played most of the, the campaign already. But has lost his place in the starting side. But will be a good introduction. A very good young up and coming star in Glen is Danny McDermott. Along with his brother Jody. They're two players to keep an eye out for you at field down the years. He's had a very good campaign so far has Danny. And we will soon see him introduced here. As Emmett Bradley in possession at the moment. Lays it off there to his midfield partner which is Connor Glass. Who has scored the only goal of the game so far. Now to Danny Tallon, who had that goal chance saved by Owen Rogers. Back out again to Emmett, who spreads it over here to Michael Warnock. And Spike may steady himself before having a go. Not on this occasion. Stevie O'Hara rushed it and rushed it badly to the wrong side and white. And Glenn do make that change. Danny McDermott coming in. And the player the going off is Connor Convery. Danny McDermott replaces number 12, Connor Convery. So 21, 21 for 12. For 12. Glenn. On the Glen side, Danny McDermott coming in. A player that I've been impressed with, Orla, from what I've seen of him this year, in particular in the Glen Colours. Yeah, I've seen him coming through underage with Derry, and um, he's one of these kind of more modern players where he, he seems to come through at such a young age, and he's already built like a 24, 25-year-old. He's got a real physicality about him, but at the same time, serious pace as well, and um, his defensive work and his ability to support the attack. He's, he's a real all-round player and a great asset for Glen. Here's Kilray coming, the man coming through the centre, might be a chance, but they're quickly crowded out again. And the Glenn getting the bodies back there, Rory Maguire back out here, and an opportunity, a snapshot, and a snapshot that has gone over the bar from Dahi McLaughlin. Good score for Kilray. They're hanging in there, Orla, without really getting their way back into it, but they're only a goal adrift. Yeah, that's it. I mean, uh, I'm sure coming into this game, they were happy to be flying under the radar, and they're doing what they need to do here and just keep the, the scoreboard ticking over when them opportunities present themselves and um, again that wasn't you know a, g a gimme kind of score he, he got the ball and he turned quickly and put it over the bar and um, you know brings him that Connor Glass goal is all that separates them now which you know at the stage of the game I'm sure if he had offered it to Kareem Kareem before the first whistle they would have took it yeah I'm sure if you had told them nine minutes into the second half you'd only be three points adrift although they were probably coming here thinking they're not coming here to make up the numbers though. But here is the ball out now to Stevie O'Hara. Has he got his angles right with this one? It looks like he may have this time. Yes, he learned a lot from the last one, Ola. I think he probably knew he wasn't going to get um, two chances to miss that sort of shot. So um, he learned his lesson from the first one and that was a really well taken score there. But he was maybe afforded a wee bit um, too much space to, to take the shot on and to put it between oh, the posts disappointing kick out and they could be really punished here the ball in but it's not a good one the goalkeeper no Ethan Doherty has beaten the goalkeeper to it Glenn won't be happy if they don't come away with a goal you would feel out of this one but they've messed it up and I think it was a fist pass the ball in would have been much better than the kick pass into Ethan Doherty and Glenn have wasted a glorious chance but what are Kilray at gifting opportunities like that Orla yeah that's it the life of a goalkeeper he's a, a hero one minute and then just a poor kick out and all of a sudden you're putting your team under serious pressure and they've gotten away with one there it's it's unlike Glenn not to be taking opportunities like that but um, you just have to be more careful more concentrated with, with those kick outs if you're not sure just kick it long because it's it's better down there than it is handing it to Glenn on the counter so McFall finds Spike in the corner back out to McFall again hasn't really got many opportunities he had one shot in the first half that drifted well wide but hasn't really had many opportunities to have a go Steve O'Hara in possession now coming forward he didn't I don't think Conliffe will thank him for that pass because he was in trouble but it's over here now to Jack Doherty Jack trying to find a little bit of space but Emmett Bradley has and he's found himself another little bit of space has he the finish Emmett Bradley with the effort no and you would expect Emmett to pop that one over that was a trademark Emmett the dummy solo created the space and he usually puts them away. Yeah, he did really well just to, to create that space for himself. And as you say, it's probably those kind of shots that he thinks he could uh, head over with his eyes closed. It's central position and some distance out, but um, he just pulled it a wee bit to the right and Kilray get to go on the attack again. James Keat playing the ball long in this time, but it's a wasted one. Connor Glass, as we see so often, sensed the danger and got back into that position. Quick hands there from... Cahill Mulholland to Stevie O'Hara waits for Conor Glass who cut out that original ball the referee has spotted something here he's given a free to Kilray did you see what happened there Orla? 
I done, but I, I saw somebody in the Kilray bench shouting for it, so I assume that probably wasn't the foul, but he's given it, so um, I have to give them credit. They, they weren't using their bias there. Uh, I think it was a pull, maybe, but um, great for Kilray, I suppose, to get back in the attack again because he didn't quite execute it, but that pass that James Keith was trying there earlier on, it, it was the right idea because they were one-on-one -on -one and Conor Glass just got back to, to get his hands on it. Um, so they, for them to get on the attack again, they're on the ascendancy a, a wee bit, certainly in the second half, so um, gives them a, another go at it. James Keith's going to have a go from there, but this one just drifted out and wide. James, maybe two, three years ago, or that. It might have been in his range, but yeah, that's the years is coming up on him and the knocks. He was forcing it, but he still had the confidence to go for it, and he it wasn't was, that far away. And whenever I was at the Bannerher game earlier on, Mark Lynch had a similar sort of shot, and that's what somebody in the crowd was saying two or three years ago. That might have went over, but um, I, if, I, if I had the career both of them had, I'd be happy enough. Well, a great catch there from Stevie O'Hara. But the referee, well, it's the Kinray man has it, but the referee has given it to... Stevie, I thought Stevie had it on the first time. And Sean Corn in your picture says that he was pulled out. He pulled it out of his hand. So it's a chance here for Emmett Bradley, you would feel, with the left foot. Although I see Connor Glass coming over, but I'm sure it'll be Emmett with the left foot. No. Uh, well, Emmett's making his way now. Yeah, I've seen Connor coming over, but it was just. But a mind game, well, well done to, to Stevie, I think. So a chance here for, for Emmett Bradley from the free when Stevie Orla the Glen physio just making sure the other Orla <laughs> making sure that Stevie is okay and Stevie is okay and he's going to take the free so they are playing mind games with us keep us guessing <laughs> so Stevie O'Hara fancies it with his left boot he has won from two so far from play with efforts this will be his first free since being introduced and unless there comes a gale force win that won't come back in should I give it to Emmett maybe <laughs> I'm sure Emmett will be saying that the next time he comes <laughs> close to him <laughs> that could be Stevie's last left footed free this evening anyway as can Ray try to somehow find their way back into it they're four points adrift they're still within touching distance a goal would make a, a huge difference but time is running out with 16 minutes remaining but Glenn far from their vintage Glen we have seen but they've done enough and that's what it's all about doing it's about winning your quarter final as a scramble for possession and somehow Sean Corn says it's going to be a free in to Kilray out of all of that there and they have a chance again to reduce it to a three point game entering the final quarter and James Keith from that position you would fancy his chances with the left foot and I suppose if he does pop it over, Stevie O'Hara will feel even more worse after not maybe leaving it for Emmett at the other end, Orla. As James comes forward and the umpires look at each other and James Keith pops it over. That's it, just very similar to Emmett for Glenn, I suppose. James just has so much experience and composure with those frees and... Um, just when you when you really need it now coming down the home straight they're going over the bar that's the man that you want to have it on his hands and um, it puts it straight over no fuss so here come Glenn there's a dangerous ball into Danny Talent Talent there's usually somebody coming off the shoulder there but not on this occasion but he gets it over here to Ethan Doherty and now to Conliff Conliff Mc or Eunan Mahon is it's in there back out now to Ethan Doherty is that a penalty yes it is Ethan Doherty pulled back as he tried to pull the trigger there playing the one two with Eunan Mulholland it was that was in there and it's a yellow card and it looked a cert from here and Sean Corn was very quick to signal the penalty Orla yeah he's just gone for the dummy and his feet have been taken out from underneath him so it's good play from Ethan I suppose what we've been accustomed to, to seeing him do just that trickery and um, he was a wee bit just too sharp for Correa and you know they'll be disappointed because They've given away, you know, a, a big opportunity now for Glen to score what could be a crucial score, and their defensive work has been really good up to this. So um, it's disappointing, really, to be to be handing them uh, and hand Danny Talon an opportunity like this. Danny Talon, about to place the ball on the spot, has been denied already by Owen Rogers from play, but will he be denied from the penalty spot? Eamon Dara to give away the penalty and the Kilray ball. 
is placed on the spot by Danny Talent as all eyes down to her right hand side Danny Talent against Owen Rogers Talent makes his run comes forward and finds the back of the net and you would feel Orla game set a match yeah that could be that um, you know Danny Talent is, is a very good penalty record and um, he knows how to find a net from, from that distance so they'd be giving him that opportunity I mean you may as well chalk it down to a goal nearly before he's hit it so having that six point gap now it's it's hard to see if Kilray are going to be able to get a goal out of this game. They had a few kind of half goal chances in the first half, haven't really created any in the second half, and you feel if they're going to come anywhere close now, they're, they're going to need some goals themselves. Connor Glass holds off the challenge as they tried to win possession back, but the height of Connor won it back, and here comes Glenn again, probably trying to just completely put this game out of sight of Kilray. Union Mulholland back out to. Kieran McFall again, 2-7 to 7 points, the all important goals in the first half from Connor Glass and there now from the penalty spot from Danny Talent as the reigning champions in control and on their way to yet another championship semi-final as they aim to keep the hopes of three in a row alive but still a lot of football to be played as you, you know, or Ethan Doherty goes down again but the ball breaks out here to Stevie O'Hara, gives it back out to Connor Glass, Connor trying to get it, an opportunity to get the effort away instead he plays it over to the far side and they're trying to work a scoreable opportunity here and a chance maybe for Michael Warnock to Conliffe McGuckin back to Michael again Michael will just try and take the sting out of the kill rate because 2-7 to 7 points with less than 12 minutes remaining is a healthy scoreline for Glenn who have been far from Vintage, as I said, but they've done enough, and that's what they'll be looking at us. Emmett comes forward again. Will he? Disappointing effort again by the looks of his reaction. He had done all the hard work, but again, it goes to the wrong side and wide of the target. I suppose quarterfinals is all about winning, it's all about getting into the semi finals, but Glenn, they'll be far from happy with their overall performance, the Warla. Yeah, I'd say, you know. I suppose Emmett's a, a perfect example that he probably expects perfection of himself and his team and we simple things like that there he's, he's not going to be too happy with and you know as we said earlier you don't really get away with those as much in knockout football so as they progress that, that's not going to work um, so that's something I'm sure that he's not going to be too happy with but it doesn't look like it's going to uh, be but a problem a, tonight but there's a chance on here for maybe another goal Cahill Mulholland in here and it's chipped over but it's gone over the bar from Ethan but that's where Glenn are usually so clinical moving turnover and the quick hands I'm surprised Cahill probably didn't have a go himself but he laid it across to Unit. it's a point for Unit or for Ethan apologies yeah that's it just as I say another one of those examples where they looks like they're going to progress tonight and, and get away with that but um, you know in the semi-finals you would expect they're going to have to be better again and if they go any further than that uh, and pr keep improving so um, they want to get those out of their system tonight uh, if, th if they are going to progress So Kilray look like they're going to exit the championship they may have felt heading into their when they were preparing for their last game that their hopes maybe of progressing past the group stages look slim as Steelstown just needed the victory or a draw or the victory against or a draw against Ball or Ballanderry in their last game would have put Kilray out of the championship but Steelstown didn't do so so Kilray took full advantage and they're into the quarterfinals but at the moment they look like they're heading out and Connor Glass may pick up a yellow card here for that challenge on Dahi McLaughlin and it is a quick yellow card from Sean Corn, and I don't think Connor can have any complaints with that one as he hauled down the wing half forward for Kilray and gives James Keel a chance here from a free with the left foot not the best angle for him but we know the capabilities of James Keel that he can curl this around and he makes it look so easy there's James Keel with another point Two eight to eight points nine minutes remaining or that Looks like there's only one winner, and I think the crowd's beginning to believe that as well. They're heading for the exit gates. Yeah, it looks like a bit of a formality now. Um, but, you know, if it does kind of remain as close as this, I think Kilray can take a lot out of this game. I, I think that they've been impressive, and they maybe haven't been quite up to the, the high standards that we expect of them. But, 
you know, when you're giving them a couple of goal opportunities, that's the difference. Glenn are going to take them, and Correa haven't really taken any sights at goals that, that they've got themselves. So um, I think a lot of positives for Correa to take, but I know that will not mean much to them when they're going out of the championship. Kieran McFall way down in the corner. With the outside of the boot, gives it back here to Michael Warnock, who I think that the floodlights kind of blinded him. So he has to track back to gather possession to eight to eight points in favour of the reigning champions. As Emmett Bradley comes forward for Glenn. Making them runs in from the far wing was Ethan Doherty, but he's not used on this occasion. Gives it back out here now to Danny McDermott. You haven't mentioned him too often as Danny. So He's trying to get in on the action. Stevie O'Hara right back now to Conlon. Bradley will spread it over here now to Danny McDermott again. Danny gathers possession. As Danny Talent makes a, a dart forward. The other Danny McDermott elects to give it back to Conlon. Plays it across to Kieran McFall. And Glenn just running down the clock. Seven minutes remain. And they're about to introduce Tiernan Flanagan as well. As Conlough lays it off now to Jack Doherty coming through. And JD pops it over. Substitution on the Kerry team. Number 21, Connor Gillen. For number 12, Rory Maguire. And for Glenn, number 25, Tiernan Flanagan. For number 7, Cahal Mulholland. 25 for... Seven, Glenn and for two changes, for 21 12, for Kilray. Connor Gillen comes in for Kilray in place of Rory Maguire and Tiernan Flanagan who played his part in last year's route to the All-Ireland final comes in for Cahill Mulholland so Tiernan returning of course he did spend some time in, in Canada during the summer and uh, I think he had a, a little bit of an injury so he's coming back again as Glenn almost turned that one over Connor Glass trying to win possession back there but not on this occasion because Kilray pick it up but he's been bottled up here two players in there Unimal Holland and Connor Glass and they managed to turn the ball over and it's picked up now by Jack Doherty he spreads it over to Ethan Doherty his brother Ethan coming in from the far wing trying to get it on to the right foot this one's hanging in the air as Rogers watches and gathers possession for Kilray six minutes remaining Orla Time for you to start thinking of your player of the match for this one. Although there's nobody really standing out, it'll be probably a difficult one. <laughs> it's a difficult choice. Uh, we'll give it to us. <laughs> <laughs> but here comes PJ McAleese. Maybe there'll be a sting in the tail yet. The sub, Connor Gillen, comes forward with the ball, but takes a wicked bounce, and Doogie's read it well. And Doogie comes out with it and plays a pinpoint pass out here now to Eunan Mulholland dinky little ball forward now to Danny Tallon Danny Tallon may take on his man here tries to hold him off Danny still has it making the run was Eunan Mulholland this will be a superb goal as Eunan bears in and goal another great save from Rogers. super save from Owen Rogers again another great move from from Glenn but Rogers, to his credit stood firm yeah again like really impressive save uh, I think there's not too many uh, goalkeepers in the county that when they're faced up one on one like that is, is going to make such a good save never mind the fact that's his second goal saving uh, block that he's made in this game so the fact that you know he's made that save at that time it shows that Kilray still have plenty of faith in themselves and um, they're not going to let this one run too far away from them No, 2-9 to 8 points at the moment in favour of Glenn I think it's safe to say Glenn are on their way to the semi-final, 5 minutes remaining here but Kilray will keep pushing to the very end and keep battling. Very few expected them to be able to overcome the Glen Challenge as that effort comes in and that would be a fine point but it may drop short and it has dropped short into the hands of Conlon Bradley. The effort coming in from Dahi McLaughlin as Glen worked the way out of defence again. Conlon McGuckin with the outside of the boot spreads it over to the far side to Tiernan Flanagan for his first touch since been introduced Conlough made the run to go and help him but he gives it back here to Emmett Emmett Bradley, Ethan Doherty going over there to help him but he'll spread it into the centre to JD, Jack Doherty as Kieran McFall makes his way forward but Jack Doherty in your picture coming forward here for the Wadi Grahams and he's no panic at all and he may give it back here to, to Doogie if need be but he's just waiting on Kilray to come and put a little bit of pressure on him and Kilray not in really much intentions of it it looks like Kilray 
it's kind of they know they're going to lose at this stage and they don't really want to, to push out because they don't really have much intentions to maybe go and win the game here but the effort coming in from Spike has he got a score yes he has the usual Orla I know I, I remember a time where you wouldn't even see him shoot and now I think I've seen Something him score a couple of points in the championship game so he's getting a wee bit of confidence over him he's going to be changing that number two jersey soon so the other McDermott is in now the older brother Jody is in and he replaces Unit Mulholland it is scary when you look at some of the people that Glenn are bringing off the bench like the strength and depth that they have in their squad uh, it's a massive asset I mean all these players that they've brought on could just as easily have been certain they could indeed and that ball's way over to the far side out over the sideline taken quickly over there so Glenn in cruise control coming down the home straight 210 to 8 points didn't have to hit the great heights but they've done enough to easily overcome the Kilray challenge Always kept them, I suppose, at arm's length. Although Kilray did get them back to within three points, but in fairness, Orla, they never looked like really troubling Glenn. Yeah, that's it. I think it's been comfortable for Glenn. It's been a, a really valiant effort from Kilray, but I think if you know the pressure had been on Glenn, they, they really could have turned it up a notch if they had wanted to. It's a great ball in there to Carvel, but his pass inside to Danny Talent was cut out by Kilray. So a let off for Kilray with just two minutes of normal time remaining. And no one, Sean Corn. I don't think he'll play too much injury time. So we won't be expecting too much additional time at the end of this one. With eight points between the sides, you wouldn't expect Sean to be adding on too much longer. And the ball over here to Kevin Quinn. Kevin Quinn in possession. But Emmett Bradley putting Kilray under pressure and they have to go back with the ball and they go right back there to Pather McLaughlin and now it's PJ McAleese is there a, a late flourish in Kilray a bit of respectability maybe to the scoreboard as they try to come forward here but Glenn are in no mood to give anything away too simply Gillen, Connor Gillen the substitute's going to have a go but it's a fourth shot from Gillen and the pressure was put on him and that one is out and wide of the target for Kilray 210 to 8 points into the final minute Orla, decision time for your player of the match there hasn't been um, anybody I think would be saying they were standing out head and shoulders above the rest I think for, for Kilray, I mean James Keith is always pretty consistent um, Tiernan Quiggs had a good game Larry Keats had a good game Dahi McLaughlin a good second half um, for Glenn I think Ethan Doherty's had good spells Brian Duggan's been very consistent uh, but I'm going to give the man a match um, I sound like a broken record because I do this often but I'm going to give the man a match to Conor Glass just because he got the first goal and I think he's kind of when there's been danger in the Kilray attack he's been the man that's been there kind of cutting out balls making turnovers and then at the other end he's kind of linking up the play as well so he's just as we all know he's a great all round player and um, I think he had a real influence on the game tonight So yeah, Conor Glass your player of the match for We Are Derry Derry GA TV for this game as Ethan Doherty pops over another score and we're going to have one additional minute at the end of this game and we're into that final minute to 11 to Glen, 8 points to Kilray and Glenn are on the way to the semi-finals along with Newbridge. As I said, the other two places will be filled tomorrow afternoon here in Owen Beg when Slotnail take on Balahi and Maharafelt will take on Ballin the Screen. But we know Newbridge and Glenn are already into the semi-final draw. There's a the long ball forward here from Gillen. And it's a dangerous one, but it's over the head. And the referee spotted a little nudge on the back there. And it's going to be a free in and this will be the last action of the game you would feel James Keelt will probably just be content to pop it over the bar or will he drop it in around the danger area and hope that somebody no he's not going to drop it around the danger area Orla, because there's no kill rate players in there <laughs> <laughs> so he's just going to pop it over and I think the full time whistle will sound when James Keelt pops this one between the posts and it does indeed nearly before the ball had gone over the bar James Keel brings the curtain down with a score, but it's the end of the road for Kilray. The reigning champions, Glenn, march on, and comfortably in the end, Orla.
Yeah, that's it. I mean, I suppose it played out to a certain extent as we expected. Um, Glenn got the victory, but, you know, Garay put on a really good performance. Um, you know, nobody wanted to play in Glenn in the quarterfinals, so um, I think they came out here and, and gave a good account to themselves, but I think it was, you know, um, we all kind of were aware that Glenn were the big favourites coming in, and I think they, they did what they needed to do to, to get over the line. You did indeed. Well, Orla, thank you very much for standing in at the last minute and going on your performance. I think we'll have you back again sometime. Oh, that's that. <laughs> thank you very much, Orla. And we will have some reaction from the winning camp now, so we'll make our way down to the pitch. But full time here. It's finished. Glenn, 2 11, Kilray, 8 points. Welcome back. I'm down there on the pitch. I'm delighted to be joined by Connor Glass. Connor, I suppose job done. It may not have been the vintage Glen we're used to, but you've done the job and you're into the semi final. Yeah, that's it. Um, it was a tough, tough sort of game out there. Um, Correa had a game plan to, I guess, give us a kick out and play. Probably, I guess, aggravate us a bit and uh, make us uh, kind of take us into mistakes. They, they done that fair play to him in the first half, but we knew that we didn't play our best in the first half and he just had to control the game in a bit in the second and just kind of get the scores and take the sting out of the game a bit and that obviously the second goal definitely helped that as well. I suppose you were looking for a good start. You palmed the ball into the net for that ideal start. I suppose that almost left an uphill task for Kilray. They were probably looking for the start that you got. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess up to that we were playing pretty good football, to be honest. Um, we took the foot off the pedal a bit, which, which isn't like us. Um, they could easily be, uh, been in the lead in the first half. Like they had two good goal opportunities, and if they had a, a bit cleaner hands, they they would have had those goals. So, um, as you said, I wasn't vintage Glenn, but like it's a quarterfinal in there for winning, and hopefully the better games are ahead of us. 
How difficult is it coming into a game? I suppose everyone had used hot favourites in the semi-final already. Kilray came here, nothing to lose. They weren't expected to get near you. So it was always, I know you don't listen to the outside world. You're in your own bubble and you're concentrating. Every game's the same. It's about winning. Yeah, big time. Um, there's obviously a lot of a lot of hype around us, I guess, after last year as well. Mm -hmm. um, but as players, as cliche as it sounds, like we just kind of stick to what our job is. Um, take it each game at a time. Uh, but it's we're looking to put in a performance. Um, th that wasn't our performance, so I'm looking forward to... Well, it's, it's only a week now to the semi-final, isn't yeah. it? So uh, probably just get freshened up and hopefully have a better better game next week, whoever, whoever we get. Do you like that game after game? Uh, now at this stage of the championship, or would you like a little break maybe between quarterfinals and semi final? No, I do. I do like it week on week. Uh, it's been a long, I guess, build up to the knockout stages, so it's good to to have a game after game now. Um, it brings sort of the enjoyment back into it as well, and I'd like to see how we go next week. I don't have a reward for you, but you were our player of the match, picked by Orla Mullen, my co commentator. So you're into the semi final, you're in the hat, you're along with Newbridge, you'll have a close eye on tomorrow, I suppose. Slot Neil and Balahi and Maharafelt and Ballin the Screen. It doesn't matter who comes through those, Connor, you know you're in for a tough test. Absolutely. Um, any semi final is going to be difficult. Um, I'll keep a close eye, obviously, and, and tomorrow it's good being the first couple of teams through so we can kind of see how the, the rest of the teams pan out. Um, obviously, Newbridge have a, a great team and they have a couple of good players too, which I've seen uh, previous third game. So, look, it's going to be no easy job, but uh, we can really only focus on ourselves and put our best foot forward. And once we do that, like we're we're up there with the best. Uh, Connor, thank you very much. Cheers, and well done again, Thanks and good luck much. next week in the semi-final. So that brings the curtain down on our live coverage this after, this evening here from Owen Beg. It's the first of the two O'Neill Senior Football Championship quarterfinals. The reigning champions, Len, are in there with victory over. Kilray this afternoon or this evening here. Connor Glass scoring the first goal and was our player of the match picked by Orla Mullen, my co-commentator. So once again, thank you to all the Just Content team here for bringing you coverage here from Owen Beg and this O'Neill Senior Football Championship doubleheader. Victory for Newbridge in the first game, Glenn in the second game and thanks to my co-commentators, Paul McFlynn for the Newbridge v Lavi game and Orla Mullen who stepped in there for the Glen v Kilray game. So that's us from now. We'll be back next week with live coverage of both semi-finals here in Ombeg. But don't forget tomorrow, come here to Ombeg for the remaining two senior championship quarterfinals. That will be Slot Neil taking on Balai and Maharafelt taking on Ball on the Screen. But from myself, Alan Gunn and all the Just Content team, it's good night from Ombeg. <laughs>